Hey everybody, how are you? God bless you today. I wanted to go ahead and get started. I, I don't know the times I would just post and say at this time I'm going to be doing this, but um, one of the things that we've been doing is uh, trying to answer all the personal message that we get through um, the website or Harrison Ministries, but also Ronald Harrison. Um, we get phone calls from different um, friends and pastors and and we're all c trying to connect and um, use the prophetic to discern uh, and navigate through these types of waters because you know we've never been here before um, the plate well we I haven't since I've been alive I've never seen um, what's going on in our country to the the level that it is. So um, I wanted to just do my part and encourage you and let you know. One, of, like I said before on one of my videos in the past, is one of the things that I learned standing in the hallway of a hospital uh, back in 2015 when my father had passed away for eight minutes was in the middle of what I call that now moment. You know that moment that takes your breath away, there's no one around, and you have that second to decide what, what you believe. And what you believe and what you know at that moment, that is what comes out your mouth. You know, People used to say all the time, I know what you believe by what comes out your mouth. That's what they're talking about. So I call that the now moment. <laughs> and so in my now moment, when I was standing in that hospital room, I remember, or the hospital hallway, I remember that feeling of the end, nothingness, the, the pain, the separation of how did we get here, what are we going to do now, all those emotions were there when I was standing in the hospital back in 2015. But what really ministered to me, God is faithful. God is so faithful. I was talking to someone last night. You know, the Bible says if we seek, we will find. If you knock, the door will open. And so our jobs right now is to seek and to, and to knock, right? But when I was in that hallway, I remember thinking, as terrible and as scary as this situa situation is, and it feels so final. I'm talking about my situation back in 2015 when Dad was um, in ICU. I remember thinking not one word of the Bible had changed. Not one word. Not, nothing in the word had had uh, moved. It was still the same. He said he was still the God that healeth thee. He said he was still uh, the same yesterday and forever. He was he was still Jehovah Jireh. Not nothing in the word of God had changed. And you know what? That really has ministered to me over and over and over again because it doesn't matter what's going on around us aren't you aren't you so grateful and thankful that his word is just as powerful just as true it's just the truth there is no other it is just as it's right here it's available to us and um it works the word works how's everybody doing I see people on here from all over. Col uh, Colorado's on here. Uh, Texas, of course, is on here. Kansas is on here. All types of people. There's people on here. I, I'm not sure um, uh, if I know exactly where you're from, but thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. You can contact us at harrisonministries.com if you need us uh, for prayer or, or anything. You can also uh, on this page, Harrison Ministries International can also um, contact us here at Personal Message, and we want to um, uh, 
pray with you. We want to encourage you. We want to speak the word. We want to take this time to be the church of Jesus Christ. Um, one thing that has happened since we've been doing these videos is I had a very sweet friend that I haven't seen in years, but has known me for many, many years, uh, personal message me uh, today. And um, because of these videos, someone, I guess some, she had uh, seen it or sh someone shared it or something like that. Anyway, let's get into Psalms 91 just for a few minutes. Um, uh, again, Psalms 91 is the staple of scripture that everyone is using um, to speak over their family, speak over their houses, speak over their communities, and and it's for good reason. It, Psalms 91 says it all. It does it all. It says it all. It's a powerful, powerful chapter. And every day that I get on here and do this, I'm going to remind you what makes this chapter so perfect, so powerful, is that it starts off in verse 1, He that dwelleth. Um, I've continued to say this. I'm going to continue to say that. But dwelling, if you study it, and I, I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to, to take this time where you maybe have some... Uh, you're not going to work or your life has changed for a season. This is a great time to, to spend some time in the day on studying his word. But I, so I encourage you to study that word dwelleth. It means to continue to exist. It means to remain in him. It means when everything around you is troubled or has been touched or it looks like things are falling apart or things are changing or things are or there's difficulties, or there's fears around you, or there's all these things around you. It is saying to continue to exist in what the Word of God says. Doesn't matter if it's about the coronavirus or if it was just a normal day and it was something else. Doesn't matter what you are facing, that when we dwell, when we continue to exist in what the Word of God says over that situation, we will be victorious. You got to understand, there's something very powerful about truth. Truth by itself doesn't set you free. You understand what I'm saying? Truth by itself doesn't set you free. When I was growing up, I grew up Pentecostal non-denomination, and they would preach and spit and scream and shake and, sh and holler and I'm, listen, all of that. But they would tell, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Well, they left out a very important word in that scripture. And that was the knowing of that truth will set you free. Not just truth by itself. My truth won't set you free. Uh, the truth that I've been transformed by won't set you free. It may encourage you, but it won't set you free. That the word of God is designed for each one of us to have the opportunity to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that if we call upon his name and we believe on him, he will then if, uh, uh, um, um, come and, and, and minister to us. If we draw nigh unto God, he draws nigh unto us. So God his whole word and who he is, he is love, is established because of dwelling. It's established because of this intimacy that we have between us and him. And so I, I'm an intercessor prayer warrior. It's one of the first gifts I ever realized when I was a little girl was that, I mean, if I have to say throughout my whole journey, I'm 46 years old. Throughout my whole journey, I have never, if I ever got myself in a bind, um, thrown off by something or whatever, I've always uh, turned into God and began to seek the Lord. And I'm not bragging about that. It's just, I just, it's just, it's just what I do. I can't imagine. I, I, I honestly, I really can't. I'm not judging. But I can't imagine getting to a place where you turn away from God. Like, I don't I don't know how people do that. Um, the only thing I can say is, um, I guess I'm just not that brave. 
Gabby, I just don't think I'm brave enough to do that because he is God. He is. He was here before me, after me, you know, whatever. And so, um, I, I just, I am. Um, I've always, when trouble came, and when, and when things got difficult, or if, if, if it, if there was mistakes being made, or if I was unsure anything, my first, um weapon of warfare so to speak was to go into prayer go into intercession i also believe in fasting uh, some of the most powerful things that has happened to me prophetically has came from a fast but you got to understand what fasting is fasting is not to get god to move fasting is to um uh, put you in a position where you're denying everything, denying your flesh so that you can be more sensitive to his spirit to get a revelation on how he has moved. You understand what I'm saying? So some people have a revelation that fasting is trying to force God's hand to move. God has moved. He he had he's not ever left us. He's never forsook it. He's never he's never turned his back upon his word. He has said it. He's declared it. He meant it. It is yes and amen. He has um, uh, your best interest at hand. And so fasting help us helps us to get into a place to be more sensitive to the spiritual things of God to to the spirit. I shouldn't have said of God because He is spirit, but to the spiritual things and so i believe in prayer i believe in fasting i believe in those kind of things but the bible says what sets us free is not prayer not fasting but what really sets us free is the knowing or the dwelling the intimacy that we have with truth that's where freedom comes in is through his word that's powerful right there through his word fasting and intercession and prophetic and all these gifts and all these things that that's the that is the the cherries on top so to speak that's those are the the extras i don't want to say that wrong and i apologize if i have but that is uh, a part of it that's important our prayer time um our intercession matter of fact i was talking to a pastor friend of mine this morning and i was saying this is the season for intercessors the this right now is a seasons of intercessors and that's why the enemy in the past has tried to dismantle intercessors that's why the enemy in the past this is a season of the prophets that's why the enemy for a season has tried to uh uh shut them the 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 voice of prophets this is the time of prophets. This is the time of intercession. But it's always time for his word. His word does not change. It is powerful. It is a uh, double-edged sword. It is the truth, the only truth. It will free you when you're bound. It will, it will love you when you feel unloved. It will, it will be a... It, it's everything it's not a book it's alive it's the living breathing word of God and so when I see that word he that dwelleth everything that I've said to this place has what has brought me to this that word dwelleth is continue to exist regardless of what now we're going to obey the laws of the land the Bible says to do that but regardless of what we're hearing regardless of what you feel regardless of what people are saying about this the negativity and the fear and the what are we going to do now we this is the moment to be the church of jesus christ and to dwell and so psalms 91 is he that dwelleth in the secret place he that dwelleth he that will dwell he that will continue to exist. He that will, regardless of what's going on, remain in me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide 
under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, this is the beginning of from 2 to 16. It is a prophecy. It's a declaration. It's a, it's a place where it says, okay, now that you've made the decision to have a relationship, not just to say you know God, not to just to say you love Jesus, but to be about it, is now you can open your mouth. The Bible says Proverbs and in 1821 says death and life are in the power of the tongue uh it says i will say of the lord he is mine <laughs> he is my come on somebody everybody out there if you're with me there's there's a few of you still on here he is mine get that in your spirit you know there's been times i've walked around my house and i've muted the television and i've said you're you're mine you are mine. He is my refuge, my fortress. I take ownership of this word. I'm dwelling. I'm dwelling. I'm dwelling. I take ownership of this word. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. Is He your God? He's my God. In Him will I trust. In Him. Will I trust? We appreciate everything that our president's trying to do. We're going to, matter of fact, we are going to pray for strength of our president and of our vice president and over all the people there that's working day and night uh, to help us. We're going to pray over our, our medical people, our doctors, our nurses, our nurse practitioners, every, all of our um, emergency services, our military. We want to keep them in our prayers. We want to speak uh, life over them, right? I would say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. That Remember we was talking about He's going to deliver you not only from the trap, but the pestilence. The, the who is trapping you, the trapper. That's what that verse is talking about. Not only am I going to deliver you from the trap, but I'm delivering you from the trapper, <laughs> okay? Um, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Remember we talked about that? He is weaved together. He is weaved together, and he will cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings, Shalt thou trust his truth? Right there. There it is. We have to trust his truth. There is no other truth. Hear me. There is no other truth but everything out of, out of the mouth of God. The Bible, let every man be a lie. But let the word of the Lord be truth. There's only but one truth. Everything else is fact, opinion, false lies. There's only but one truth, and that is out of the mouth of God. So he shall trust his truth, shall be thy sh shield and buckler. He's got you covered. He has surrounded you with protection when we dwell complete surrounding with protection we drill dwell i want to look at verse five real quick because one of the things that i when i look at verse five and six here he's saying thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Those are around the clock. <laughs> the enemy's busy. Is what I read that. He is busy, busy, busy. You know, he's he has got things going uh, at night, day, noonday, <laughs> in the dark times. But anyway, let's go back to... Um, uh, verse 5 here thou shalt not be afraid it that's a, that means what it means thou shalt not be in fear thou shalt not be in fear you know when you pray 
The Lord says, when you pray, pray, believing, believing in him, you shall have it. I know sometimes when we pray, depending on sometimes who the person is or depending on what the situation is, sometimes I know I have. I have prayed in a place of uh, being conformed and praying, hoping that God does what he says or praying that God will do what he says instead of praying knowing that he is true to his word and that all I have to do is step into that place of believing on him and then watching God move his hand in a situation but he's saying do not be in fear do not be in fear God has not given you given us a spirit of fear he has not given us a spirit of fear so he says, thou shall not be afraid. And he's saying, those that are dwelling, those that are hidden in him, there will be no reason for you to be afraid. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror. Um, that word terror means there. Thou shall not be afraid or be in fear of the things that should cause you to dread. This there are things out here. There's things that's going on in, in this world that we're like, oh, I just dread this. I just dread that. If you're dwelling, you are not to be in fear for dreadful things or or the object of that dread. Afraid for terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. We're not to dread, be in fear of anything that's piercing, wounding, um, thing, the trouble that seems to uh, keep moving uh, every day, every day. When you, we wake up, it's like a daily, what's, wonder what's happening today kind of thing. So dwelling puts you in the place of reminding you what God has said. When the world is saying you're going to be in lack, he is saying, I am Jehovah Jireh. When, the, when your body is saying that it is fighting sickness and disease, dwelling says, I am the God that healeth thee. When the world and, 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 and fear grips us and, and a trouble comes, he is saying, I am your peace. You understand? That's dwelling. That's dwelling. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Amen. So, I don't have a lot of time today. We I have a lot on my plate. Ministry right now, as as you can get on Facebook or or even at your local churches, ministry right now is not behind a pulpit. It's not in four walls. the The Church of Jesus Christ is now. We're in the we're out in the, out in, our walls have come down. We have been preparing for such a time as this. There's pastors and churches and communities right now pulling together. And they're saying, listen, we are the church. We're strong. We're in unison. And we're in, we believe God that he's going to do what he's promised he's going to do. So. I encourage you again today, the secret to Psalms 91 is dwelling. The secret to Psalms 91 is dwelling. Continue, continue, continue in his word. If you are uh, experiencing, if you are experiencing fear, anxiety of any of those kind of things, I want to give you these scriptures, and I want you to read them today. Not just read them, but get them in your spirit. Get on a, a con get a concordance or a, a Bible app to help you get the translation. But really pray and ask the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to you. And so, if you're having some anxiety, I've been getting um, personal messages and different ways people's communicated with us, saying, you know, I'm feeling a little bit this and I just want to give you some scriptures outside of Psalms that you can read and 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 
and get in your spirit. Are you ready? Proverbs 12, 25. Proverbs 12, 25. That's one scripture that you could hold on to right now. Let me see if I can find it right quick. It says, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Amen? So the word of God. Also, 1 Peter 5 and 7. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Also, John 14, 1. And of course, Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Those are some, some scriptures. Um, if you are wanting to study your Bible and you're unsure how to do that, or you feel like when you open the Bible, if you're, you feel overwhelmed, be sure and reach out to Harrison Ministries. We'll have someone to contact you, or we'll, 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 um, we'll do something to help you to study. Again, I want to tell you if you, because you'd be surprised, the people that um, I get asked that all the time. I'm, I'm unsure about how I study my Bible. If you're needing some scripture, say, I don't know how to get to scripture. Remember, I told you, you know, if anything, you can Google. Be sure that you have a great translation of that word, okay? Um, but you can, everything that you're in need of, every answer that you that you have, is found in scripture another great scripture uh, I call it one of my staple scriptures on my trumpet is um, Romans 12 1 and 2 and it says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind it's another scripture that's telling you dwell <laughs> continue in the Word of God another great a thing to do is to study the, the the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where you can see the testimonies uh, and the, the 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 pattern of when Jesus walked upon the earth and the different things that um, it, it's great to see to see those kind of things there. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? Uh, what we talked about yesterday, Mark chapter 4, that was where that story was, Mark chapter 4. And when I was telling you when he was spe speaking to the multitude, he said, let those that have ear hear what the Lord is saying. And he, the, uh, verse 10 says, and when he was alone, they were about with him with the twelve and asked him uh, the parable. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these th things are done in parables. And so Rome, uh, Mark chapter 4 verse 11 is also given a, a demonstration that Jesus was given to his disciples. The power of dwelling. The power of dwelling. He was saying those that are dwelling continue to exist remaining in me. Unto you is given the, the mystery of the kingdom. And he said uh, they are seeing they that seeing that they may see and not perceive and hearing that they may hear and not understand at least at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them and he said this and i love this i preached this one time it's a powerful and he says this and he said unto them know you not this parable then how will you know all parables and he said the sower soweth the word he's saying right there again in mark dwell be the sower soweth the word. Before we sow anything, we need to know what the, whatever we're dealing with. We need to know what does the word of God say about your situation. Again, to me, when I read that, verse 14, Mark chapter 4, verse 14, to me, that's Jesus speaking, but he's telling them again in a different format, dwell, dwell. But see, you can keep doing this. You can just keep on and on and on doing this all through the Word of God. But the most important thing that we can do right now as Christians 
as neighbors, as family members, as a nation, is to uh, know what the word of the Lord is saying and stand and believe on it. Amen. All right, guys. I hope that I have encouraged you in some way. Hi, Miss Becky. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Hi, Joe. How are you? In, in Tennessee. Hi, Miss Sheila. I love you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Aunt Beverly. Hey, Pastor. I got two pastor, one pastors in Texas, one pastors in Kansas. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. Joe, Tennessee. Um, Restoring Hope Church. Powerful, powerful evangelism going on at Restoring Hope Church. They're... Um, giving out there's a diesel truck in their parking lot and people are driving up and they're giving out food that's been given to them powerful powerful um ministry going on in hendersonville tennessee at restoring hope church and that's where um Mr. Joe goes to church so praise god hallelujah for that all right guys i bless your life I bless your life. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day today. Amen. Dwell. Dwell, dwell, dwell.